we humans are so sensitive to, to nonverbals that we're actually seduced by them and we don't even understand why. So here's a collection of mobsters from the 1920s through the 1950s. Let's look at the nonverbals and see what they tell us. So here's a photograph of Bugsy Siegel, and just from the outfit he's wearing, we can tell just how narcissistic he was, how important it was to look right, to look sharp. And yet, if we look closely at his face, we know he's worried about something. Even at, at about three weeks of age, we know that babies will focus on the eyes and the glabella. Interestingly enough, uh, Botox affects this area, and there's actually uh, ample research now that it affects relationships because we can't pick up on the, the behaviors. We look at photographs of these other guys and we make them bigger than they really are. And here, if we were to block the face, you notice how this gangster is giving himself a self-hug. He's insecure. He's just been arrested. They're not these mythical figures. They're just like anybody else. They just uh, have a gun to hurt you with. One of the things that stands out is how often they looked very stoic, and they did this on purpose. They knew that these photographs would be published, and one of the things that they wanted to convey was that they were not a rat. And so in their photographs, you see this very stoic look, not very friendly, not very kind, the tough guy that they've always been. Invariably, you see things that give him away. Now, here you see a, a gangster, he's been arrested, and he's pulling up on his socks. And what's interesting is how often we pull up on our socks because we're ventilating ourselves. The skin overheats, especially around the legs and the feet, and so we, we ventilate that way. Some situations are so painful. Here we have a mobster under arrest, and you notice that his eyes are closed, He's pinching uh, the top of his nose, and this is a universal behavior that I really don't like the situation I'm in or what I'm looking at. Most often, when we don't like something, the nasalis muscle, the muscle right above the nose, we tend to uh, wrinkle it, but we don't realize we're doing it sometimes. Here's a, one of the mafiosi on trial, and they may pretend that they're tough, and they may pretend everything is fine, but when you look at his attorney, and you see those compressed lips, the corners down, he knows that my, my guy's going to prison, and the nonverbals clearly reflect that. You often see uh, people testifying before Congress, and you see a lot of lip compression. That's because of stress. And when we look at faces, we don't realize how often we're giving information away, as in this photograph, where you see the furrowing of the glabella, you see the pursed lips. This guy really doesn't like the situation he's in. And so they're tough guys, uh, that, you know, they brag a lot, but in the end, they always reveal something about what's going on. There's a saying that you can ruin the most perfect uh, mountain view by reducing it to the, uh, the physics of light on the optic nerve. That's what I do with a face. To the average person, this would seem like hard work, but it, it really becomes like software running in the background. I don't think about it. It's just something that I'm constantly uh, doing at, at any one time. And that's how I analyze people.